Hey everybody, it's Ross. Uh, this is a very exciting day for me because this is the first time in a long time. Well, I've been growing my grapes now, I think this is the fifth year. And these are my European grapes that you're looking at. And as I said, this is the first year since maybe the second year I had them. In the second year I planted them, they actually put out some grape clusters for me. And I got to taste some homegrown grapes and I was really impressed. Believe it or not, they are extremely sweet. And you can really let them hang on the vine for a long time. And they'll just continue to sweeten up. Um, these have just gotten their color. So there's some here that are of the right color. There's some that are a bit lighter. And this, I guess, would be ideal for picking for commercial potential, but they're perfect. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful cluster of grape. There's nothing wrong with this. It's so good, too. This is a variety called Mars. This one here in the middle. And it reminds me a lot of a Concord grape. <clears throat> but it's seedless. And that's what I've actually been trying to find. There's a variety I added this year called Everest Seedless that Cornell, I think, has bred. And I was so excited about that grape because it's a disease-resistant Concord grape that's also seedless. If you know anything about Concord, the Concord seeded is quite disease-resistant, quite reliable here in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. <clears throat> but the seedless Concord is a, just a horrible grape in terms of it, its disease resistance. So this, I'm surprised, I've already got one. I didn't even need to get the Everest seedless. This is doing the job. And I guess we should rewind because the reason why I have successful grapes and I haven't had them since the second year is I have struggled with disease. If anybody is in the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, in a humid climate, the South, you're gonna to struggle to grow European grapes. You just are. Because there's disease in, in the form of powdery mildew. Now luckily I have disease resistant varieties. I don't get any powdery mildew on these three. I have Himrod, Mars, and Interlochen. Uh, the green grapes on the end, they might be switched. Might be Himrod and that might be Interlochen. I'm not sure, I have to check. But. They don't get the powdery mildew, which actually destroys the leaves. Just like our squash and our melons and the really the cucurbit family in general gets the powdery mildew pretty badly. Uh, these grapevines get it as well. But you can get some varieties that are resistant to that, which is really key because you got to keep the leaf. If you don't have leaves, you don't have photosynthesis, you don't have the sugars that go into these fruits. So that's really key. And that's why a lot of people spray their vines to keep that powdery mildew off. Now I've avoided that disease here completely, but there is another disease, which is worse in my opinion. It's called black rot. You really can't get rid of it once you got it. I've even sprayed very harsh chemicals. Maybe I should have sprayed a little bit more often than I did. Um, but black rot is a disease that forms on the leaves as well. And then the water hits the droplets. Uh, the water droplets hits the, the disease. And then the spores of the disease then hit the grape clusters below. And the grape clusters get infected with black rot. And that's what I've been dealing with is that usually around this time of the year in August, even before that, I look at my grape vines, my grape clusters, and they're all infected with black rot. I got mummified berries, berries that uh, are inedible, didn't produce the sugars that they needed to. And therefore, I'm, uh, I'm really happy today. I really am. So this is really key. And I'm, again, I'm so, so excited to have this here, is these bags. So I'm happy to announce that these wax paper bags have worked. We talked about this, doing this in the spring. And I did this pretty much as early as possible. I tried to get these wax paper bags around the clusters as soon as I could. 
uh, without damaging the cluster. Also within a time frame that would not already infect the clusters. I've harvested a couple clusters now and I can safely say that all of them should be look like this. They're basically perfect. In fact, there's, very, there's almost nothing wrong with them. It's insane. It looks like a, a store-bought cluster of grape, except smaller. And they're so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one down. I'm going to harvest two more clusters for you guys, just to prove it to you guys. And I'm going to also harvest the green grapes I have. Whatever this guy is over here, he took some cold damage one year. I think because we did some improper pruning, but here is a uh, grape cluster number one unveiled. Basically perfect. And here's another part. Must have broke off. Amazing. And I can let these hang on. I don't need to harvest these now. And I am going to let some of them hang on because they're going to continue to sweeten up. The longer they hang on this vine. And I hope that this, these clusters over here are ready because I'm not sure if they are. See if I can get a little sneak peek in here. Nope, they're not ready just yet. So I'm not gonna harvest, but I promise you, this green variety here, it's called uh, Himrod. The clusters look exactly the same. They're basically disease free. Um, so I'm excited. I'm gonna. I'm going to make some raisins. We're going to really let these sweeten up. And um, what's really nice, if you guys didn't know this, is that the grape, like the fig, actually produces its own nectar. So if you were to dry these into raisins, you would end up actually seeing visibly the nectar. It looks like honey. And I don't know if people know that, but if you get them real sweet, I dried this variety here years ago, and I think maybe even hemrod into raisins, and that nectar dried up with it, and you could visibly see the nectar. It was a golden honey color, and they were so, so good. So that's actually why I decided to grow grapes years ago, is that a, a client of ours um, brings us raisins every year from Afghanistan, and they're just incredible. So I was amazed at how good raisins could be that are not from the store. Obviously how good these grapes are not from the store. So I don't know, man, I'm loving it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video here. You're now more inspired to grow grapes in uh, more humid climates. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Look at that little cluster there, guys. Ain't that something. Hit that subscribe button for me.